All right, what's going on, everyone? Bryce Gelman here. Going to be discussing a lot today on this episode. First ever two-time guest here on this YouTube channel. John Dostrebski joins us of the New York, New York podcast on the Ringer Podcast Network on Spotify. Going to be talking about Yanks opening day. Going to be talking about some Knicks as well. So stay tuned for all of that. JJ, what's going on, man? How's Bryce, everything? Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, I feel like it's been a whirlwind of the last few weeks since I got back from South Africa. But, you know, tournament time, uh, getting ready for the Sweet 16, getting ready for opening day. Uh, NBA and NHL playoffs, which are going to be very busy around here, kind of right around the corner. So uh, we're firing on all cylinders, man. I just wish my golf game was in the same boat as our podcast, you know? And that, that's, that's a big ask, JJ. And I said this I said this in the open. I wanted to you know, make it clear to you. You are the first ever two-time guest on my YouTube wow, channel. Wow, so, okay. I, I like know. that. I'm the, I'm I just wanted recurring. to make that clear okay. to you. I want to give you a little pat on the back and uh, just let you know that this is – Kind of a big deal here. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be I'll, I'll be waiting for my little plaque and, and trophy that I could put in the background. I like that. That's actually on the fifth time. So I need you. To All right, on the fifth this. time, I'll get the trophy deal. I'm in. We'll uh, we'll go through your schedule and then we'll find some time. All right, let's uh, let's get right into the Yankees because I mean, this time last year, the, the hopes were high. Everyone, I mean, for, for some people, uh, I don't think I was one of those people who subscribed to the same belief the Yankees were. This, you know, this this change team, this change organization that we're going to actually compete for a championship. But now we're Juan Soto. We got it. We have Juan Soto. We have Marcus Stroman. We've got a, a revamped team. We've got Verdugo. We've got a bunch of younger guys. Where after what the the, mid, the unmitigated disaster that was last year, where's your head at with the Yankees right now? OK, so going back to last year, because I want to go back to last year first. Worst season since 1992. Everything went wrong. The team, to use your words, was an unmitigated disaster. I, I, I totally agree with that. It's totally spot on. I was not totally pessimistic going into the season. Like, I thought they'd be a playoff team. I didn't think they were as good as they were the first three months of 2022. I didn't think they were as bad as they were in the second half of 22. And clearly, I was wrong because they were much closer to that 500 team that we saw two years ago in July, August, and for half of September, then they were this team that got off to this insane start. So I, I want to preface all that by saying I thought the Yankees would be a playoff team last year, and I was wrong. This year, I do not think they're a championship team. However, I think they're much closer to the top half of the American League than they were a year ago. I mean, listen, you had one of the top, 10 players in the sport, that should immediately give you a bump. I think offensively, Bryce, they are going to be much more entertaining to watch because they have balance throughout the lineup, which is something they haven't had. Soto and Judge, the idea of those guys kind of playing off one another, I think is going to be awesome to watch. I think Volpe takes a step forward. I think they got more edge to them as well. But I think there are serious questions on the pitching side of things. And I think you have to be fair. If you look at the American League, the Astros are the top dog until you see otherwise. The Orioles won the division and they added Corbin Burns and a young. That's the difference between the Orioles and the Yankees. The Orioles feel like they're this ascending, young, athletic exactly. team. You can't necessarily say that about the Yankees. I think the Yankees are a good team. I think they're a playoff team. But I'm not exactly, you know, plotting my October and the early November for the World Series and a trip down to Kenya Heroes. Does that make sense? 100%. And I, I just want to say, like, going off of what we've seen in past years, you could look back to probably 2017. I think that was the last time we've seen the Yankees make as many changes as they did this offseason. So do you think, after everything they've done, trading for Juan Soto, signing Marcus Stroman, getting, getting Alex Verdugo from the Red Sox, do you think this was all enough in terms of, you know, you, you did mention the fact that this Yankees team is not going to compete or you don't think that they're good enough to win a championship, but do you think that those moves were enough in your eyes? So yes and no. Um, it's opening day. Uh, right now on opening day, do I think they have a championship caliber team? No, but I also think a lot can change between now and the end of the year. And 
you know, a lot of people are going to look at the pitching market, right? Right. And don't get me wrong. I want a Jordan Montgomery back. But in all seriousness, if you're Jordan Montgomery and the Yankees banished you two years ago and they cast you aside and the GM of the team was quoted in saying he wouldn't have been a part of our postseason rotation, I, I don't know about you. They could throw me all the money in the world and I would tell you to go and kick rocks. I would say, no, I'm, I'm not coming back to the Yankees and I don't get the sense Montgomery wanted to come back and I don't get the sense that the team that traded him for Harrison Bader was, you know, all in on the idea of giving him, you know, a big money contract, which he was initially looking for. And then he ended up getting uh, a two year deal with the Diamondbacks, but Snell, listen, I would have taken him on a short term deal. He did win the Cy Young. He's also very volatile. I think we have to acknowledge that. You know, Blake Snell has had years, and if you look at the back of his baseball card, he's very much a good year, bad year, good year, bad year kind of guy. So won the Cy Young last year. So what does that mean? Exactly. So I do think they'll be able to get a pitcher come middle of July if they're good enough, right? Like if Shane Bieber is available, that's a guy the Yankees should be in on. If Jesus Lizardo is pitching great for the Marlins and the Marlins aren't any good, They'll be able to add a starting pitcher. So that's why, like, I'm very, like, hesitant in answering that question. Like, right now, the Yankees are a championship team. No, but if you go and add one of those guys and Cole comes back and health actually kind of treats this team well. For once. You, you know what for I mean, once, Bryce? Man. Like, you could yeah. paint the picture for me. So that's why, like, I'm kind of walking back a lot of Yankee, like, crazy predictions in April because – I've gotten burned too many times. I got to see it to believe it. But listen, they should be in the mix. And if they're in the mix and they add to the team, then you make a run at this thing. And you see if for once they can go on one of these October runs that kind of has been eluding them. Can they give me a Phillies type run? I mean, they haven't done it. Dude, that team hasn't been in the World Series since 2009. I know. It's it, it now 15 years, JJ. 15 years. I was eight years old on that 20. I was a senior at Syracuse. You don't have to remind it's, me. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So let's talk about uh, a glaring problem last year that this year is going to need to change if the Yankees want to be successful, especially with Garrett Cole out, and that's Carlos Rodon. Where, like, what does he need to do this year for the Yankees to consider him a success. Like how much of a step up does he need to take this year as compared to where he was last year? Okay. Um, take the ball every fifth day and pitch a lot better for starters. <laughs> like we talk Sounds about simple. statistically yeah. speaking, Cabrera was one of the worst, you know, guys as a position player, batting average wise, OPS wise to get that amount of at bats. You look at it from a pitching standpoint. Last year, statistically speaking, Carlos Rodon was one of the worst pitchers in the American League. That's how bad he was. I think he's going to be, Bryce, closer to the guy he was two years ago. I don't think he's going to be that dominant. I don't think he's going to be that good. But I think if he can go, first of all, he needs to get off to a good start. Like, there are certain yeah. guys you yeah. look at and you say, oh, does a fast start matter? Does it not matter? I think it really matters for Rodon. He needs to get off high-flying. Um, just to get the Yankee fan off his back a little bit, allows him to, you know, relax and kind of ease in and get going this season. I'd sign, dude, I'm not greedy. Go make 25 to 30 starts. Go go pitch to a 3-6, 370 RA. I, I, I take that, Bryce. I don't need a 2-5 year. I don't even to be a Cy Young candidate. Can he go and be a second, third starter for this team and take the ball and be reliable and durable? I'd gladly take that. I'm just thinking like how good this team could be if Rodon actually played up to his contract. Could you imagine if the Yankees had a legitimate number one or two option, a lefty at the top of their rotation, along with a healthy Garrett Cole, it, looking at what we had and what we thought we had last year. I mean, is it crazy to expect something similar to what he's paid? Well, that's what the Yankees paid him to do. Let's be honest. I think that was the move they looked at where they said, wow, this is going to be our difference maker from where we've been the last few years. 
And it didn't work out that way. It, you didn't see him the first couple months of the year. When he did come back, he pitched terribly. Um, the stuff is there. There's no getting around that, Bryce. He's got nasty, nasty stuff. Um, you've seen it with the White Sox. You've seen it with the Giants. Can you see it with the Yankees? There's also the fear factor. Is he wired the right way to handle New York? Exactly. Year one, he wasn't. Now, it's one year. I think this year is going to be much more of a telltale sign to what kind of factor that is. Because I kind of look at last year and it kind of snowballed, right? He gets hurt. He comes back. He pitches poorly. The fans are giving it to him. Like, it's this this trickle-down effect combined with all of the other nonsense that was going on with the Yankee team. So it made matters that much worse. Um, Like I said, these first two months, they're going to be telling with Rodon. Because if he's awful for the first two months, then I don't think there's any turning back. I don't know how he salvages this year, and I don't know how he salvages this contract. I just don't. I think my major concern behind all this is that Garrett Cole is going to be out. And it's a lot easier to pitch behind Garrett Cole in the rotation than to pitch behind Nestor Cortez and Marcus Stroman. And Nestor Cortez is the opening day starter. I think if the Yankees were competent in Rodon's abilities, he'd be the opening day starter. If he actually was believed to go back to what he was as, you know, as a giant, I think that there's no doubt about it that he's starting that first game. It's just, I think that the organization looks at Rodon and it is still a major question mark and they want to give him as little pressure to perform and taking the ball opening day in Houston tomorrow would be putting as much pressure on him as he's had as a Yankee, I think. Well, and they rewarded Nesta Cortez, yeah. who's been a good Yankee and has pitched to an all-star level and won them a game five against Cleveland in the postseason. Like these are notches on his belt that Carlos Rodon does not have. So I totally understand, Bryce, why the Yankees are giving Nesta yeah. Cortez the opening day start. The bottom line with that, though, Carlos Rodon is going to pitch in plenty of big games for the Yankees. I mean, game two. Is there that much of a difference between game one and game two against the Astros? You know, the only difference is it's going to be on Apple TV on a Friday night. So, you know, against the, against the Sweet 16. So maybe it gets a little lost in the shuffle, if you know what I mean. But listen, the Yankees need both of those guys. They need, they need innings out of their starting pitching. That, to me, is the most important thing they can have between now and the return of Garrett Cole. You don't want to have a situation with your bullpen. And the Yankees are pretty good about piecing together a bullpen. And I expect they'll do a pretty good job of piecing it together this year. They'll probably have one or two guys that you've never heard of, you know, the down the Ian Hamilton route or down the Clay Holmes route that ends up being a real good keeper for them. Yankees been good about putting together a bullpen, but if they are taxed and they have nothing left by June and July, you're going to see it and it's going to be problematic. Do you see... And I think it might have been MLB's Instagram page put out a list of the top 10 bullpens in Major League Baseball. The Yankees weren't even one of them. How is that? I, I don't uh, know how I'm you make that. I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm not surprised by that. Because the Yankees don't have the sexy names in that. They don't bullpen. have the names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't have the names. And the I think they're factoring yeah. into all oh, they lost Michael King and maybe it's not going to look the same. They did say goodbye to a bunch of depth pieces. But again, they got Juan Soto. Like again, um, I no no disrespect to Michael King and you know Randy Vasquez and Johnny Brito. Uh, I'm not going to be complaining that those guys are gone when I'm watching Juan Soto hit balls into the short porch at Yankee Stadium. You know. So speaking about Soto, and I, I believe we talked about him the first time you came on here. Are you at all concerned that this time next year he's going to be playing in Flushing and not the Bronx? I guess it's a concern. He's going to free agency. Uh, the, the Mets are going to be very aggressive in trying to sign him. Now, remember something about the Mets. Before they're putting Juan Soto in, in a Met uniform, they're going to have to pay Pete Alonso a lot of money. And I know they can do it. I don't think Cohen would necessarily like balk at the idea of giving out both big contracts. I do think that's something David Stearns may have some reservations about. Just knowing his sort of blueprint and his sort of model for building a team, I wouldn't be surprised if he said to Steve, hey, look, let's sign one of these guys. 
let's let's have a little financial flexibility so I can go and make my next move. But so far, here's why I'm now again how this season plays out could dictate this price. If the Yankees go 82 and 80 and the team stinks, and even if Juan Soto is having a great year, they may look at it and say, Well, we had Juan Soto, he raked, we still stunk. So maybe we need to evaluate and maybe we need to do something different. But he is kind of, I don't know if you felt this way, just from like following along in spring training, he kind of has really embraced this yes. idea of being a Yankee. Yes. And yeah. listen, the Yankees are very well aware of their PR. They're ve- it, like, they know, listen, Cashman takes heat, Boone takes heat, Hal takes heat. Hal knows. He's smart. I, I I like to think he's smart enough okay. to realize how bad the especially if Soto has a big year and the Yankees are in the playoffs and he plays well, dude. And this idea that oh, you know, he can't make more than Aaron Judge. I don't think Aaron Judge cares. No, uh, yeah, that that not, narrative that was been much. floated out there. Aaron, Aaron Judge don't give a crap. He wants to yeah. win. He's getting well compensated. He's getting well taken care of. So that's my hope, Bryce. If Juan Soto is like, listen, all that matters to me is money, right? And it's just going to be a bidding war, bidding war, bidding war. Then Steve Cohen and the Mets are going to have a leg up. But yeah, I think yeah. the Yankees, if they offer him five hundred and fifty or six hundred million dollars, and he has a great year and he loves being a Yankee, I think I, I think this year is going to go a long way in determining his future. That's my two cents. Agreed. But then you got to look at what Scott Boris had to go through his clients, you know, this year. One of the not, worst not a great look for Boris this year. Now, and listen, Boris, Juan Soto's a little different Boris, than those guys. I different. know. But I feel like this upcoming free agency is going to be like Scott Boris is like game seven, like win or go home. He gets Juan Soto the $600 million deal. His face is saved. His name, his, re- his record, his, you know, his reputation is saved within the baseball community. Uh, if the Mets offer him a significant more amount of money than the Yankees do, I feel like no matter how good the season goes, there is still the opportunity and there's still the likelihood that he goes, you know, cross town. I don't know. I just, for I, I, as a fan who's had to go through the last 15 years, the high expectations that the Yankees are, are actually making moves. The Yankees are actually, you know, preparing themselves to compete with the top teams in major league baseball. I think those expectations have not been met, obviously. So you look at a move that they made, an incremental move. I think, you know, it, it could be considered one of the biggest moves in franchise history if he's resigned. But a move that was made just for this year, I can't, in good faith and good conscience, sit here and tell you how excited I am for it because it's only one year. And there's no doubt. Yeah, I guess that. As you said, that's why this they team gotta, is not why built to pay it off champion. this year. That's why they got to pay it's it off it. this year. But that's the you thing. Know, so and- now... So now, why don't you go out and make every move necessary? Why don't you bring in Snell? Why don't you bring in Snell and Montgomery if you understand so, what is necessary? Here's my here's my theory on that. My theory on that is the Yankees are back channeling some of that money, knowing what's coming and knowing what's staring them in the face next year. Yeah, maybe there's something to that where they don't now. If it's one year commitments, who knows? Maybe it's tax stuff. I don't know, but I do think the Yankees are aware of hey. Next year at this time, we are going to be uh, spending a whole lot of loot on three individual players, hopefully, where it's Judge, Soto, and Cole, yeah. and we are tied in for a long period of time. Yeah. So who's your pick to improve the most this year? It's a good yeah. question. So I had Jorge Posada on last week. He's very bullish on Glaber Torres. I don't like that as an improvement pick, Bryce, because – Last year, he's I'd argue Glaber solid. Torres was yeah. the best everyday Yankee because he played, he posted, he put up numbers. He should have been an all-star. So I, I don't like that one. How about this? Volpe's too obvious. He's a young player. That's like, that's to me, that's, there's no fun in giving you Volpe because in theory, he's the answer, right? Like he's a first year guy, got his feet wet. He should be much better than he was in the second year. I, I don't want to give you that. I think Stanton. Agreed. 100%. Swimmer. Not as much pressure on him. All of a sudden now, hey, it's Judge. It's Soto. It's Soto. It's Judge. He's hitting behind those dudes. 
And I don't know how many games Stanton is going to play. I have no idea. Like Stanton could play 50 games. I'm not going to be shocked. But I think his performance price, I think he hits 35 plus home runs. If he's on a field, easy. Easy. I have to agree. I think it's Stan. I, I, from what I've seen, the three home run game in spring training, this guy is on a mission. He's a man he's on a, a mission. He's a prideful guy. See, that's the other thing, too. Exactly. I like the fact that he, is, is, and, and say what you want about the Yankees bringing him in. And listen, we all would have preferred Bryce Harper to fit the team yeah. better. Stan has handled himself like a pro. He's prideful. He gives a shit. I'm sure the fact that last year, him being as embarrassing as he was, has been eating at him. Like, this, yes. you know, this is, that was the worst season of his career. I think, and I'm not saying he's going to go and be an MVP, but I think John Carlos Stanton is much improved this year. And I think you like watching him saying, yep, that's the guy who can go and dominate a stretch for two or three weeks. Yep, that guy. I want to just, you know, take a moment to just think about what this Yankees team could be if he ends up meeting your expectations, if he ends up being who he has been in the postseason, healthy stand in the postseason is a game changer for the Yankees, especially with Soto and Judge in the lineup. If you get a healthy Stanton all year, who could build on the success, build, 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 not get an oblique injury and miss three months and then have to work back for another month and a half to get back to where he was beforehand. If he could stay healthy, minimize the, the, the major injuries, he can be what brings the Yankees up to speed with the top teams in Major League Baseball in terms of competing for a championship. I think he not only is, you know, I, I agree with you that he's going he's gonna to be, could be the one to improve the most. I think he's the X factor for this team. I think that if he performs what we know John Carlos Stan to be able to perform to, I think there's no, you know, there's no predicting how far the Yankees could go. Well, he could dominate know. a series. Yeah. That's the thing. We've yeah. seen him do it. And, you know, you're waiting for Judge to have that great postseason run. Soto already has had it going back to 2019 with the Nationals. But that, that's that's the idea, Bryce. Get those guys in a postseason series and let the dogs eat. You know what I mean? But Yankees got to stay healthy. Yankees got to be in one piece. Yankees got to get there. And then we'll see what happens. All right, I'm putting you on the spot. How many wins do they have? How many losses? And where do okay. they go in the postseason? Or do um, they make it? Losses, I don't know. I, I'm bad with math. We, we don't do math at Syracuse. But I think they win 90, 91 games. Second place, at least. Nine, That's my 91 position. and 71 would, would be. Would there be you go, 162. Game. Good math. So that wild card team. Game. Wild yes, card. I have them as a wild card team. I do not have them winning the division. I'm picking New Baltimore. Yeah. And the reason I'm picking yeah. Baltimore is because they're younger. As simple as that. I have more confidence in the young guys' ability to go and play than I do in the older Yankee team to go and play. Over. And, and let me say this, though, Bryce. I think winning the division now means absolutely nothing. Yeah. means nothing. If you get into the playoffs, that's all I care about. Because now that the – now I know it puts pressure on you. I know you have to win a three-game series. That's all true. But the Diamondbacks, the Phillies, Phillies, the Rangers are all examples. It's a new format. Look at these teams and what they've done the last two years. Just get in. That's all I care about, dude. Just get in. So now where do you think they go? If they make the – you're saying they're going to make the postseason. How far they do they go? They will make the playoffs. I think they will win a series. I have to see them beat the Astros when it counts until – I don't know how anyone on planet Earth could pick the Yankees to beat the Astros until you see them beat the Astros. Am I wrong? How could I honestly, in good faith, say, yeah, they're going to beat the Astros? Haven't seen it. Haven't seen it in any way. So uh, until I do, wake me up, Bryce. Wake me up when it happens, please. I, I agree. I agree. And it's like the biggest, uh, the biggest beatdown in sports these you know these past few years, you can look but it's gotten worse. every See, that's every the thing. single it's professional actually sport. Worse. It's pathetic. It's the well, actually, last year no, you're right because they didn't play in the right. Who cares about what they you're did right. in the season? They but came the, the closest playoffs, in 2017. Actually, in each series, it has gotten progressively worse. Yep. It was seven and, and seventeen. It was six and nineteen, and then it was a whooping four, four. game sweep, yeah. which was as lopsided as it gets uh, two years ago. I, all right, so I, let me just let me get my prediction out of the way quickly. I think the Yankees are going to win. I'm going to say 88 games. I think they sneak into the second or third wild card okay, spot. So I think that they. Okay. I think they win the first series, and then you see 
what this team has been plagued by for the past few years, and that's the the lack of performance by the biggest players in the biggest moments. I don't want to say that. I don't want to put that out in the universe, but I think that that's going to be the case. Again, as you said to the Astros, I'm of the same belief that until I see it, I can't in good conscience say that it's going to happen. And Aaron Judge has been, let's just put it bluntly, awful in the playoffs in his career. I mean, I think he had a good playoffs in 2018, but if you look at his other numbers, they have not been good. And the he Yankees not had the dominant perform. postseason. There's no getting he around is. it. He is not. And, and listen, Soto has. That should help him. Exactly. Stanton has. That should help him. Yeah, you're right. Listen, the one thing I would caution you on, though, there are a lot of guys over the history of the game who have been underwhelming postseason performers. Barry Bonds took him forever. 2002, now he might have been all roided up in 2002. Insanity. Alex Rodriguez, who right, was man. a worse playoff performer than Aaron Judge by a significant margin, way worse. 2009 rolled around. He had his moment. If you, My feeling on this price in baseball, if you're that good, and I think we both agree, Aaron Judge, he's that good, you keep knocking at the door one of these years, you're going to have a monster run. It's just the odds are in your favor, you would think, with your talent, you would think. It's kind of wishful thinking, but, I mean – if you go back and look at these major guys who've had struggles, it's going to happen at some point. All right, let's do uh, – I want to do a few minutes on the Knicks here, and then and then we'll wrap things up. Sure. But I I have never been as amazed watching one of my sports teams in my entire life, JJ, and this is my number one team. My family, you know, it runs in the blood. I have never witnessed what we are witnessing on a night-by-night -night basis. What do you think is the biggest, biggest catalyst behind the Knicks' success? I think it's the attitude of the team. I really do. And I think it starts with the head coach. I think it kind of stems down to the type of players, the way they're wired, what they've brought into the organization. They compete their tails off. I think what symbolizes this more than anything, Bryce, and I know they lost the game. You go back to their road trip. They beat Portland. Great win. Portland stinks. Okay, whatever. They beat Sacramento. Outstanding win. They beat Golden State. Normally, when you have an NBA team, I don't care who they're playing. It's the last game of a road trip. They're 3-0 on the road trip. It's 1-2. Let's get on the damn plane. Let's get out of here. We got. We don't care. We're ready to go home. The Knicks against the Nuggets competed their freaking tails off. They had no business They would, they would in that not game. let that game end without yeah. them scratching and clawing and trying to do everything imaginable to win it. They didn't win it. They felt short because Denver's a better team and it was a brutal situation for them. But I thought in many ways that game kind of symbolized, wow, this to me is what this Nick team this season is all about. And to me, the regime, folks, and I know Leon Rose doesn't talk to the media, but he's done a brilliant job. You can't say otherwise. Thibodeau. And I know a lot of like the, the Twitter police and a lot of these. And listen, I don't love that he plays these starters like 10 zillion minutes. It's but too much. I'd much. But you know what, though, Bryce? If you're giving me two options and option one is Tom Thibodeau or option B is a lot of these other loser NBA head coaches, I'll take the guy who's taken my team to the playoffs now three of the last four years and has the Knicks back to a point they have not been at since the late 90s, early 2000s, where they're a playoff caliber team year after year after year. So to me, it's the regime, the coach, and of course their best player that deserves the credit for the sort of culture that kind of has been built here. All right, last thing. I need a prediction from you for the Knicks as well. How far do they go in the playoffs? I have to see how the seeding shakes out um, because I think their ceiling is the Eastern Conference Finals. Like I think if things go right and they end up as a three seed and they – don't get Miami in the first round, which would scare the crap out of me. Nick fan, yeah. if you're watching, you're listening, you don't want Miami in the first round. Oh, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. That series has disaster written all over it. But assuming they don't get Miami, they win that series, I think they could beat the Bucs because I think the Bucs are soft. I don't think the Bucs play defense. Doc Rivers is their head coach. He stinks. I think they could win that series. I do not think they beat Boston. They match up terribly. Porzingis has killed them. Tatum and Brown, they, they have so much experience. I think they'd give them a good series. I think they'd fight. They're not winning that series. I, I think 
The only way they could get to the NBA Finals, honestly, is if somebody beats Boston, like Miami, as an example. That, that to me, is or, or there's an injury. Other than that, the yeah. Knicks at full strength, the Celtics at full strength, they're not winning that series. I'd say second round, Bryce. That's my gut feel. But I can see the Eastern Conference Finals. That makes sense? Yeah, I mean, it's all about when they match up with Boston. I think, JJ, I don't know. From what I've seen, this team has this, as you said, this attitude, this fierceness, this never-give-up mindset that could give them a fighter, a fighting chance against the, you know, the, the, the top team in the NBA. Boston, I mean, no one even com- comes close to Boston. I think Denver could compete with them in the finals, but that remains to be seen if Denver can even get back there. But I think Boston healthy versus the Knicks healthy, which we haven't seen with, with Ananobi. I think the Knicks could take them seven. I, I really think that they but could. But all these Boston guys coming back them, though, yeah, and they're going to the be a peak strength, especially Randall. All right. Ananobi's come back. He's played. The elbow is going to be an issue. We haven't seen, first of all, we haven't seen Randall in about a month and a half, two months. And two months you also have two to throw in the today. fact that Randall has not been a good postseason performer. Yeah. No, I mean, all these catalysts could impact whether or not the Celtics, you know, could eventually fall to the Knicks. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's 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 wishful thinking. I think hopefully the, the Knicks could, could give them a fight, but are they even going to get there? We don't know. We don't know. But hey, I mean, I've never been as excited to watch a team. Hopefully the Yanks give us a semblance of competency like we've seen from the I think they will. I I I think they will. I I think it'll be a fun summer in the Bronx. Fun summer. How much? Fun October remains to be seen. Fun summer. How much more betrayal can I take? How much more betrayal can these Yankees fans take? I just, I don't know. We'll see. JJ, you're the man. Check out. Hey, let me, I got to plug one thing that you just did, which is so impressive that you got this and even more impressive, the attitude from this guy. JJ just interviewed Jim Beheim. Check it out. His latest episode. I'm sure you'll probably do a Yankees. Like a full, are you going to do a Yankees preview? Well, we before, did that. Uh, so, like, the Bay, that's what was great about the Bayheim interview. Was, we oh, kind of okay. put all our baseball predictions in there. But as far as opening day reaction slash Sweet 16 reaction, yeah, we'll have something up uh, Thursday night late, early Friday morning for sure. All right, JJ, you guys well, Beheim was that pleasant. Who, who knew he was. he was very he pleasant. Was. It was great. I was shocked. I was really shocked listening to that interview. You could check that out on, on Spotify, on New York, New York podcast by yours truly, JJ, John Dostrevsky. JJ, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. So the pleasure is all mine. Anytime, dude.